I can tell her voice from everyone's voice in the stands. Like if I don't take a shot, if I make a bad play or something like that, she'll be yelling and stands like, Brooke, come on. Sometimes when she does that, I'm just like, Mom, chill. I'm very vocal. And she'll tell you anytime you would go to a gym, you know, in junior high, high school, AAU, it didn't matter, you always heard me. I've always been that way. She's one of those people who takes care of others before herself. She is a single mom. She's had to raise me and my brother by herself. When it comes to basketball, she's very intense. I fell in love with basketball because she was in love with it. She coaches little dribblers team. She always coached older girls, and so like I would always be at practice with her. I was like, well, I mean, I'm here. I can try it. She was about four, and she one day just told me, uh, Mom, I can dribble. And I was like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know. And she's like, no, really, Mom, I can dribble. And I was like, okay, so let me see. So she started dribbling um, without traveling. So I was like, Hmm. I said, well, do you want to play basketball? And she was like, of course, yes, you know, I want to play. She just loved it from day one. Whenever she started playing, even though she was so little, the different aspects of her game that she improved on every year, I just knew that that's something that she could do at the college level. She started getting letters when she was in seventh grade. The first camp she went to was North Carolina. Actually offered her in the seventh grade. I was like, I'm going there. It's kind of like a dream school, which I think it was my dream school because I had only been to that camp first that year. She went to Tennessee camp, and that's when Pat Summit was around, and she, you know, asked her, she said, so where do you want to go to school? You know, and my child is, you know, as honesty as she is, she's North Carolina. <laughs> you know, and it's like, this is Pat Summit. You don't say that. With the offers piling in from schools around the nation, Brooke McCarty ended up on the 40 acres a 190 mile drive from her home in League City, Texas. A distance that at times felt insurmountable. It actually started the first day that I got dropped off. When my mom left my dorm, I was kind of like in there by myself and I was just like, oh, I need my mom here, I need her here. <laughs> my freshman year, I was crying every weekend. I wanted to go home every single day. I remember one time she called me and she was like, I don't know if I'll be able to make this game, and I just instantly started crying. I realized that she wouldn't be able to come to every single game, but I think that conversation actually made her realize that I need her at every game. This is the first year that I haven't driven as much. Back and forth to Austin, twice, sometimes three times a week, so this year. It's close to 8,000, I would say. Most of the time I drive uh, those that I can, unless they're just, you know, so, so far away, like New York or whatever, but for the most part, I drive and drive back in a day. Right. Are you gonna go to sleep? Let me guess. Yes. Yeah, so this is the normal. She goes to sleep on trips, and I'm left by myself, so might as well be driving by myself. <laughs> I love to drive at night. It's just what I love to do. Um, daytime, I kind of get tired and sleepy. You know, it's too light outside for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go horns! <laughs> go Texas! I'm blessed that I'm in a position with my job that I can travel. My kids, they've been motivation for me. I've been a single mom, you know, forever, so they're my life. Wouldn't change it, wouldn't change it for the world. It's the best feeling. I'm very appreciative of everything that she's done for me and I don't know how I would have made it through anything without her. And even those days I'm going through things, like she finds a way, she always finds a way. Take it on. 